Thank you so much, uh, Mr. MC. Ah, uh, quite a song. A song. Even in you, because of time, I need to rush my presentation. I was asked to speak for about 45 minutes. Now it has been adjusted to 20 minutes. And I must respect all the panelists, especially those who have traveled from outside Aquibum to be here. So let me just go straight and please, I don't think I'll take more than 20 minutes. Uh, it is only appropriate that I begin by thanking Otobon Uwa, the book's author, for keeping to his word that I should be, I should be the keynote speaker at this event. Otobon and I met last October at a forum of young, and I would say some of the finest brands from Aquibon State who are resident in Lagos. He brought the idea of today's rule and even reminded me early this year at a friend's daughter's marriage. Given recent political developments in the state, it was a surprise to receive a message on February 24th reminding me again of today's task. I thought Otobon had potted and therefore considered the reminder a testament to his constancy and commitment to principles. You know, when you venture into politics and things change, everybody disappears from you. So I praise Otobong for these personal qualities, which used to be the character traits of Akwaibon people in the past, but which have declined in recent times. The topic cultural rebirth as critical element for nation building is very, very important and fits this occasion. And I'm happy there are students here. So let's start this discussion by defining the word culture. The Roman philosopher, politician, and orator, Marcus Cicero, has credit for being the first writer to use the Latin form of the word culture. However, he used it metaphorically to describe philosophy as a cultural animal a culture of the soul or cultivation of the soul. For a man called John Bruce, culture is a means of improving the human being, not merely physically, but spiritually. It therefore signifies a process in which deliberation, knowledge, experience, and awareness all play a fundamental part. It implies a clear sense of values, high and low, founded on a clear sense of principle, human perfection and imperfection. Bruce believed that developing culture implies effort over long periods, not the moment's work, but instead of seasons, years, decades, even lifetimes. According to the UNESCO World Heritage Convention, 1972, cultural heritage can be tangible or intangible. Tangible cultural heritage is everything we can touch and perceive clearly, including buildings like this, historical places, monuments, handicrafts, sculptures, paintings, etc. On the other hand, Intangible culture encompasses practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, and the skills that the society recognizes as part of its cultural heritage. Both tangible and intangible cultures pass from one generation to the other. I am sure we are all on the same level, at least now, regarding our understanding of culture and what it is. But on the other hand, I don't understand why Ottoborn chose this topic. Rebirth, rebirth, what does it mean? It connotes a new life, a reawakening, a renewal, a revival, or a renaissance. 
after some period of decline. The term suggests that the status quo is unsatisfactory and must be reinvigorated or rejuvenated. Therefore, a discussion on national rebirth is apt, given what we are going through in this country. A culture of corruption, tribalism, religious and ethnic nepotism, selfishness, wastefulness, incompetence, inefficiency. And you can add your own lack of wealth, power, what have you? Let us acknowledge that culture changes over time and in response to societal and environmental factors. The advent of colonialism, Christianity, and commercialism, the three C's, also change our society permanently. For Nigerians, especially those who are older, we recognize that after Nigeria's independence came a military coup the attack. And there was a 30 month civil war. There was an oil boom, population explosion, industrialization, the structural adjustment program, economic inertia. What do we have now? Era of information technology, globalization, amongst others. All these factors arrested growth and development of our indigenous ways of life. The result has been the emergence of new cultural traits and value systems, emphasizing such aspects as Western education, material wealth, and social position. As with every society that experiences rapid social and economic changes, the fallouts have not been all positive. And you know why? Those factors like crime, corruption, ethnic and religious intolerance, moral decay. So the question we should be asking ourselves today is where are we headed? On February 24th this year, Russia began a military invasion of Ukraine one of his neighboring countries and a former ally in the now defunct Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR. This invasion has resulted in the large scale evacuation of people, predominantly women and children, who have now become refugees. While the federal government of Nigeria has evacuated its nationals, Information has it that some Nigerians were reluctant to return. Their preference would have been to stay back in Ukraine or any European country, notwithstanding the discrimination encountered even at a time of war. I should be asking yourself, why would your own national refuse to come back to the country? The reason is simple, and they have attested to this. These are not my words. Insecurity, unemployment, poorly funded education, disruptions in the academic calendar, ASU is still on strike. Inflation, social, poor social infrastructure, outdated health facilities, incompetence in the public and private sectors, insensitivity of government officials, Etc. Etc. It is for these same reasons our youths, especially those of you seated there, students, please listen to this. Our youths have now undertaken perilous journeys across the desert and the Mediterranean Sea to migrate to Europe where they can only get menial jobs or get involved in social vices. Nigerians wallow in abject poverty and hopelessness amid abundant human and natural resources because we have imbibed a culture of individualism, waste, inefficiency, corruption, ethnic and religious discrimination, 
and lack of vision. So faced with the above scenario, we need to pause and re-examine our national goals, our national values, and our priorities. We need to redefine our cultural pathways to ensure they are in sync with the future we hope to bequeath to the next generation. And we should start this endeavor with ourselves. Let's stop the blame game. Everything is Buhari, everything is Abuja, everything is somebody else. Start with yourself. Let me focus on my people, the Bibios, who were known for humility, hard work, honesty and integrity, friendliness, dependability, peacefulness, and naturalness. Our women were renowned for their industry, loyalty, homeliness, and as promoters of family values. It is not for nothing that our forebears admonish that if you educate a man, you educate one person. If you educate a woman, you educate a whole family. They saw that value in our women. This honesty, stealing, murder, immoral, and deviant behaviors had the rebuke of the authorities. And they were institutions to enforce compliance with social and religious norms. The heroes in the society were not necessarily wealthy people, but men and women of integrity and courage, whose what word was the truth. Unfortunately, our ways changed at a particular time in our history. And we became known for disunity and greater love and respect for outsiders. Can I forget my Vice Chancellor, Professor Emmanuel Ayandele Diodorfin of Obomosho? at the University of Calabar, who described us as an atomistic society perpetually at war with itself. I was in my second year then. Painfully, that statement still resonates. Given corporate and individual acrimonies, I have observed. Sadly, today, some commentators have even characterized the Bibios as an ineffective majority. Notwithstanding our claim to be the, fourth, the country's fourth largest ethnic group, some Ibibio subgroups have since assumed new nomenclatures, even within the state. Although our shared cultural heritage continues to bind us together. So we must ponder and ask, who are the Bibios? You know, as an essential attribute of any human society, we know that culture defines the idiosyncrasies or biases or perception. For example, the main mention of Jamai elicits some thoughts in you. Such thoughts are strengths courage, efficient institutions, highest quality products, etc. Despite the political divisiveness in the U.S. between Democrats and Republicans, there is a general pride in being American. And American citizens enjoy the protection of their country wherever they are in the world, even if they are in jail. Back home, the Nigerian society attributes, specific cultural attributes to some ethnic groups. For example, the Yorubas love the Awambe lifestyle. And they owe no apology to any other ethnic group. They attend social functions in style and share gifts generously. They are also known for cherishing the things that bind them together. They are dressing, food, music, dances, language. It doesn't matter wherever they are in the world. 
when a Yoruba person runs into another, you will know. The same applies to the Hausa Fulani. They do not joke with their language. And an average Hausa Fulani boy or girl is taught his or her native language, Hausa or Fulfude, first, with English being secondary and usually learnt in school. We know the Igbos for their determination, entrepreneurial spirit, creativity, and industry. They also value their language, their foods, and their proverbs. The question for us all is, what are the Bibios noted for today? Have we been able to sustain the positives linked to our cultural heritage? Let's test a few of these positives. As mentioned earlier, we were known for hard work to the extent that no, no manner of work was considered too menial. An Ibibio man will do his assigned work diligently and be happy to earn his wages. At some point, we were so trustworthy and diligent that elite Nigerians, I'm not talking about poor Nigerians, so elite Nigerians, freely granted us access to the most protected parts of their homes, the kitchen and the bedroom. Forget the absurd mischaracterization, especially by their offspring. Needed to be somebody to be allowed into the inner recess of someone's house. Others roundly acknowledge a republican nature on average, and if your person was known for frankness and principles, the adage, Ndiyaku from Fu, or Ndiyaku from Owu, is a common phrase, which means that one can express his mind without equivocation, because his livelihood is not dependent on any other. What of a passion for education? I am sure you have read the story of the Bibio Union as told by no less a personality than the late eminent jurist, Sir Justice Udoma, in his book, The Story of the Bibio Union, His Background, Emergence, Aims, Objectives, and Achievements. The Union, formed in 1927, recorded the enviable achievements of being one of the first African organizations to award scholarship to its members, the six Ibibio merchants of light for higher education in foreign countries. It also worked with the Colonial Education Department to establish the Ibibio State College in the country, and that was in 1946. Our women were courageous and exemplary. They even confronted the colonialists who sought to intimidate us almost a century ago. You may know about Madame Adiara the paternal grandmother of Senator Udoma, Udo Udoma, who led the Kotabasi Women's Protest Movement of 1929. Her story was recently retold through song and dance by Joseph Edgar, the Duke of Shumolu, we need to showcase more of such stories. Our people made significant contributions to national development. Akman and Ebong document some of this in the article, Akwaibo State and National Development and a Brief Assessment of the Contributions of the People of the Land. I encourage you all to read that article. And you read about Sir Udo Udoma, Obon Samson Udoitu, Obon Young Isien, Chief Mephi Okone Yo, Brigadier General Wellington Bassi, who was earlier mentioned, Cardinal Dominic Ekanem, Obon Wan Great Samson Udoit, Clement Tison, many. President Ibrahim Babangida also confirmed this while on a state visit after the state creation. He said, I do not exaggerate when I say that. The states in the Federation owe some gratitude to Aquaibon State 
because the cradle of the movement of state creation is here. In this sense, it can be said you are the founders of modern Nigeria. That was in 1991. Given the above enviable records, we should ask how and when we missed the mark. The Christian faith was brought to our shores over a century ago. With the Presbyterian Church in Calabar from 1946, Kwaibo Church arrived in Hebron in 1887. Then came Methodist Church to Oron in 1893, followed by the Roman Catholic Church and several others. By embracing Christianity and Western education, we dropped a part of our cultural heritage that was repugnant to civilized conduct. And that was good. For example, we abandoned slavery, the killing of twins, demolition of enslaved people as part of their master's funeral rites, sacred calls, the human leopard phenomenon, we abandoned all those. A new acculturation process began where churches replaced their ancestral shrines and deities. Modern schools promoted literacy. Mission-owned operated health uh, institutions reduced the influence of native diviners, traditional medicine men, and idiom cult. Social clubs and high life music impacted the appreciation of traditional dances, while Western style dressing became the norm. Despite these gains, some people have questioned the near abandonment of our cultural heritage. Even though this is debatable, there is a more worrisome cultural trend into which we seem to have relapsed. And I will highlight just a few. I should be done in the next five minutes, please. We all acknowledge that slavery is illegal. But surprisingly, some of us still find it convenient to keep minors at home in the name of house serves and with no prospects of education or economic empowerment. What is that? Some organizations clothed as places of worship operate in ways worse than the long abandoned traditional secret calls. The killing of twins had long disappeared, but we find today the popularization and exploitation of our children with some labeled as witches and wizards. Others have become street urchins. Some are out of school. While the nocturnal masquerade of our four bears, Ekurakata, noted for gossip and tell bearing, is a thing of the past. Today, it has been replaced by the prevalence round the clock and ubiquitous Ekamba Kata, with mindless character assassination as the new normal. Sadly, very sadly, even our religious, political, and traditional leaders are not spared from attacks. Why do we enjoy destroying our people? Okay. Okay. social media. Just to destroy people. Why do we do that? There are other dimensions of our cultural heritage that are fast disappearing. This includes our inability to confront what is not correct. How did we get to the point where we have lost our voices on matters even in admonishing persons who are moving in the wrong direction? Why? When I was growing up, for the first time I was caught drinking beer. It was in Mr. Kong's wife's uh, canteen. He called my father to report, and we were four, four of us perching on a bot bottle of Golda. But we were all 17. But today, nobody bothers again. No communal care. Why are we so fixated on wasteful consumption as a culture amid glaring poverty? What drives our young ones to anglicize their lovely Bibio names? If not for lack of pride in their heritage, why are we fixated on pulling down our own 
Why don't we foster genuine love and fellowship with one another? Do we still have icons and role models from our stock? Where is the place of our language in the scheme of things? Do we know that if the current trend continues, the Bibu language will become one of the 400 Nigerian endangered languages? As highlighted, not by Udo Minoyo, by the former president of Linguistic Association of Nigeria, Professor Chinya Ohiri Anichi. And lastly, what about our history, the record of our journey from the past to the present? We must admit that there is still a shortage of recorded materials that speak to who we are regarding our history. For some, propagating if your culture may be a waste of time and not profitable venture. But let's consider this. The Ile Ife ethnic group in southwest Nigeria is said to be one of the oldest traditional societies globally. Wikipedia, Google, and the like speak to their history. With some accounts saying it dates back to between 1280 to 1480. The same goes for the Bidding Kingdom in present day Edo states. Rich culture and a proud people. The Bibios could have predated these other peoples. As suggested by Professor M.D.W. Jeffries, 1935. But more research should be conducted to confirm this proposition. Otobon, I saw in their flyer, 680. That's good. In the context of the need for recorded material on who we are and our cultural heritage, we must applaud you, Otobon, for this, for this book. I'm aware that non bibios especially Europeans, wrote the early history of the Bibios. Several other Ibibio scholars have published books on a biblical history and sociology, but a lot still needs to be done. Reading Jeffrey's account, one will observe that the recent launch of the Bible Bible on August 27, 2020, is a commendable effort that had righted the wrong done to the Bible language in the 1930s when the colonial authorities chose to adopt EFIC as a, lamb, a dialect of instruction in schools instead of a Bible. That decision was not justified, either upon a population or a linguistic basis. I would recommend that the state government finds a way to order and distribute to schools Professor Jeffrey's book, O Calabar Notes on the Bible Language, which provides vital information about us. Before concluding this address, let me suggest further a few actions that we can take to enrich our culture and contribute more to national development. We must re-examine our values and de-emphasize material wealth and unnecessary titles because a society of anything is possible cannot progress. Number two, we must upgrade our educational system. The school curriculum and the workforce and also ensure that we deploy technology that is required to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Families, communities, faith-based and non-governmental organizations must be involved. That is why the Noyotoro Foundation has been involved in the education sector of Akwaibo State in 15 years. And frankly, I must say, as a Nigerian, at this point, all of us should be ashamed and concerned about the recurring ASU strike. Everybody needs to wake up and make sure that there is a solution to it. As a people, we must discourage costly burial ceremonies. Borrowing money or selling properties to sponsor befitting burials rather than investing in economic ventures is senseless. Senseless. We should stop it. Invest in qualitative education. Since we are predominantly Christians in Akwaibo State, please, I am begging, let us practice our faith with common sense. 
We live in the 21st century in which science, technology, and medicine have recorded tremendous advances. Sick people should be treated in hospitals, not in churches. While the doctors attend to our sick relations in hospitals, the pastor should offer spiritual support through counseling and prayers. Hmm? In this way, both the spirit and the body will receive needed attention. Let us stop blaming every misfortune, illness, or sickness on someone else. I will nam, I will nam, I call on the State Minister of Education to promote reading culture among our youths. In this age of the internet and mobile devices, we must encourage and support them to become global citizens. I believe this was the point made by the English philosopher and statesman Francis Bacon when he said, reading make it a full man, conference a ready man, and writing an exact man. I must at this juncture salute the incredible efforts of Dr. Odeman Nandam for pioneering the Yo Book Club, and I hope well-meaning individuals and corporate organizations will lend support to that initiative. Once again, Otobon, I congratulate you for your courage, diligence, vision, and thoughtfulness in writing the book we are launching today. I believe this book will add to the literature on the videos. As we rejoice with you, please, I'm begging, let us not forget the words of Mohammed Hassan. The heroes of the society are those who have the characteristics and qualities that society appreciates widely. People imitate their behaviors and values. I pray as society rises to the challenge of producing the right caliber of heroes and heroines. God bless all of you. I think it deserves a bigger round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Center. Please put your hands together for him as he sets the background for our panel discussion. He spoke on cultural rebirth as a critical element for nation building. So uh, we'll be having some takes on what he has said and what he has not said and um, to see how we can wrap all of this together and make Akwaibom and Nigeria better.